Hi, welcome to Adventure Capital, a podcast about the world of investment crowdfunding, brought to you by WeFunder. In today's episode, we speak with Paul Scanlon and Jeff Addison, the co-founders of Legion M. With almost $10 million raised from 29,000 investors, Legion M is the most successful company in WeFunder's history. Inspired by their vision to democratize Hollywood, Jeff and Paul launched Legion M on WeFunder the day regulation crowdfunding rules came into effect on May 16th, 2016. They've helped write the script of the WeFunder movie ever since. If you want to dream bigger about raising capital from an army of fans, listen on. So, Jeff, Paul, uh, welcome to the podcast. Great to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you Certain for having here. us. I'm and and welcome to the WeFunder us. office as well. I know. A we live love podcast. coming to visit here. Yeah. Um, it's great to have you guys here. Um, let's get started with the basics. Maybe you guys could give us an overview of Legion M. What do you guys do? What's the big picture vision? Sure. So Legion M, well, we're the world's first fan-owned entertainment company. And uh, what we mean by that is we're literally owned by a fast-growing and vibrant community of entertainment fans, people that are excited about movies and TV series. And with fans as our co-owners, we're investing in and producing movies and TV series. And the whole idea is that by uniting and recruiting a community of fans together to be our shareholders, we're also um, building our audience Mm -hmm. into our shareholder base and into our community Uh, But we also found that um, by having this community, it gives us a a better kind of vantage point Mm -hmm. on what types of content Mm -hmm. and what content Mm -hmm. does our community want. So it's, you know, we have a lot of ideas and and a lot of mechanisms by which we, what what we call harness the power of our community Mm -hmm. uh, to make us a better and smarter company. Yeah. Our long-term goal, the M with the bar over it, is the yeah. Roman numeral for one million. Yeah. And we've been, it's baked in from day one. Is our long-term <laughs> goal is to unite one million fans as shareholders of the company. Wow. And we do that because we believe that a, a company owned by a fan base of that mm-hmm. size has huge competitive advantages. Mm-hmm. And so pretty much everything that we do is figuring out how we can leverage our unique strength, which mm-hmm. is the fact that we're owned by fans mm-hmm. and use that to make better decisions and to improve the odds of success yeah. of the movies and TV shows yeah. and products that we create. Yeah. The really cool thing about it is that by doing what we just described, we're also delivering on our promise to our shareholders. Mm-hmm. Um, so they want to have a voice. They want to be engaged. We mm-hmm. call it opening the gates to Hollywood. We want, you know, this kind of exclusive industry that, you know, for years we've been on the outside kind of in awe of to be something mm-hmm. that we have access to. Mm-hmm. And uh, by doing this, allowing our community to engage and mm-hmm. have a voice, we're not only delivering on that promise, but we're you know, creating a better a better company and hopefully mm-hmm. better content in the end. And you're bringing them into Hollywood as well. We talk a lot of we find her about democratizing finance. You're mm-hmm. democratizing access to Hollywood. Yeah. Everyone gets to be an owner in mm-hmm. your company. And yeah, I mean, we bring people in. to red carpet premieres. We yeah. brought them to Stan Stanley's hand and foot imprint. I mean, we you know go to Sundance every year and we yeah. invite everybody to yeah. come out. And it's one thing like as a, you know, entertainment fan to go to Sundance, maybe go with some friends or, and that's kind of a cool experience, Mm -hmm. but to go as a co-owner of a company that's hosting a lounge on Main Street and is going to buy a film at Sundance based on votes from our Film Scout platform that they're contributing to, that's just... It's like it takes takes the entertainment experience to a new level, yeah. Yeah. Um, The other thing as well is that, you know... if you have tens of thousands, ultimately a million investors, you build a huge, super successful company here. Who do you want to be making money off the back of your success, yeah. right? A couple of millionaires, yeah, you right. know, and institutions or your fans and community and customers. The people that have been supporting it the yeah. whole time. Yeah. yeah. It's really interesting because I think for us, a lot of people that invest in Legion M mm-hmm. are investing because they're fans of entertainment. 
Yeah. You know, our minimum investment is a hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, we're recruiting people at comic cons and film yeah. festivals and that sort of stuff. And so there's a lot of people that will say things like, I don't care if I ever make any money from yeah. my investment. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just in this cause I want to be a part of Hollywood. I want to yeah. change Hollywood yeah. stuff like that. It's very aspirational, but I think what's really cool about it is that those people are investing like venture capitalists. Yes. And if we are successful, yeah. even though they have no expectation yeah. of it, they have the potential to, to make, make a lot of returns. money. And I think yeah. the irony of it is, is that because of the fact that so many of our investors don't care about a return, I think yeah. it actually improves yeah, our ability sure. to give them a return. Yeah. Whereas if we were just, you know... Had yeah. financial analysts that were in that didn't care anything about the entertainment there industry. There wouldn't be any the whole spirit thing about it. There would be yeah. a movement, yeah. a community, which is ultimately going to hopefully drive the success. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good we're, point. We're all in on yeah. equity crowdfunding. Yeah. Like, yeah. We love it. We believe, like, we, we tell people. Well, us too, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have we you heard about this thing? Yeah. 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 Have you heard about this thing? But we're it's like. kindred spirits. <laughs> we tell people that we don't see equity crowdfunding as a new way to finance a company. Yeah. It's a fundamentally new way to build a business yeah. that could not have existed before equity yeah. crowdfunding. Well, just before this podcast, I was chatting to Sheldon Grizzle, um, who's with Chattanooga FC. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you saw. Oh that yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's another great example. They yeah. raised, I think, eight hundred and fifty grand from three and a half thousand people in Chattanooga. Yeah. I was one of their investors. Yeah. They're actually now doing a shirt, a jersey, soccer jersey with all the names of the investors on the shirt. That's fantastic. Oh, and they nice. say they've sold seven hundred jerseys at a hundred bucks each, I'm which sure. is meaningful revenue for them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think sports teams is another great example, but it could be in any industry. Modern Times is a brewery that just raised a million oh bucks for that. Yeah. So. I mean, if you think about it, like for us, you know, it seems pretty obvious. Yeah. Like, and, it, and a lot of people would, would tell us like, oh, that's such a great idea. Why yeah. has no one done this before? Yeah. And you all know, like up until the Jobs Act, I mean, it wasn't yeah. really possible or legal to well do. you guys launched your first we fund and now i was looking you've had nine separate fundraisers <laughs> i think some of those were kind of two fundraise ids in our Combined, database yeah. in one fun- yeah in one fundraise from external perspectives but you launched the first one on may i think may 16th 9 a.m yeah. 9 a.m we the day it went legal you I guys were don't there. believe that we were the first ones to submit uh-huh. but trying i think to be the, the guys first. before yeah. us or the yeah. company before us like they got it returned like it wasn't yeah. valid and they yeah. had to resubmit yeah um so i think that we we're are the either the one. first yeah. or if not the first one of the first couple we'll go with the we're first yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll go with we're the first, the first. Yeah. to get to a million dollars too right and no, actually, oh, I think that saying. distinction was, was it Hops and Grains? There, there was another company, a brewery, yeah. Got it. that Hopsters. launched at the same time. Or was right, that yeah. Maybe Hopsters was early as I well. I thought it was Hops and Grains might have been Hopsters or something yeah. like that, yeah. Well, we had, um, you know... We're the first one to get to $9 million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And 25000 <laughs> Yeah, But we, uh, you know, one of the things, we had announced our company ahead of the introduction of title three when regulation cf came so we we were playing when, yeah, when was that and that that's actually a question i once asked like okay we're here you, you just said it i ran the stats just now i saw twenty three thousand seven hundred ninety eight investors so you're mm-hmm. two and a half percent of the way there to yeah. the million yeah, dollar exactly. million investor goal but we're growing exponentially growing so, exponentially yeah. the valuation's growing the dollars yeah. in there so we're, we're here now where did this come from what was the genesis of Legion M and this crazy idea to build the first fan owned entertainment company. I I would say, well, Jeff and I, this is our third company together. Mm-hmm. And I would say this is sort of the culmination of the previous two companies kind of combined. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also added with a whole new element of it. So we started a company called Moby TV, mm-hmm. which was in the, in the kind of streaming space, but ended up becoming also a content acquirer and licensor. Uh, an aggregator we were you know creating like netflix like services uh on behalf of other uh other brands and then um during that experience we spun out a company that jeff ran uh for many years uh called new york rock exchange Mm -hmm. uh which was a similar type of uh, model in the music space, um, but it was it was the Jobs Act company before the Jobs Act. <laughs> yeah, well, the Jobs Act had just been passed through Congress, but twenty twelve, but yeah, the Title exactly, Three yeah. regulation took a little while. Took so. until May twenty sixteen. Yeah, yeah. 
But so, so as uh, the rules were really, you know, being finally written into law, mm-hmm. you know, we, we had kind of teamed up and conceived of like what we thought would be, you know, an amazing company if we mm-hmm. could pull it off. And we really saw that, you know, yeah. that, that first day as a once in a lifetime opportunity yeah. to like yeah. create the, yeah. the world's first fan owned yeah. entertainment company. I'd say we, we can't take credit for being the first ones to think of it, but yeah. we can take credit for being, you first know, the right place yeah. at the right yeah. time yeah. Yeah. and having, you know, yeah. seeing the opportunity. So when did you, when did you kind of say, yeah, let's do this? Was that like 2013, 2014? And then were you just kind of twiddling no, your thumbs? 20, until, no, it was 2016. It was late 2015, <laughs> yeah. right? was when we started to come together and we saw the opportunity yeah. and, we, yeah. we started, like any good company, like we yeah. started off with a slightly different business plan. We were yeah. working with um, Seth Green and the team mm-hmm. over at Stupid Buddy Studios, mm-hmm. uh, and we were doing something uh, with them, like a, a, a new way to expand technology um, and, and develop products with them. And, you know, that was just about the time yeah. that the uh, that the Jobs Act, mm-hmm. you know, came into effect. Mm-hmm. and. We, we saw this kind of opportunity and we, we talked with them and we ended up just kind of shifting. So they're one of our launch allies, but then mm-hmm. we brought in some other people mm-hmm. and it shifted from being something that would have been like a subsidiary of Stupid Buddy Studios into mm-hmm. something that it was its own Insane. its own thing. And then yeah. since then, obviously, it's taken on a life of its own. Yeah, so. I would say so. Well, and one of, the, one of the things as an entrepreneur, you know, we always ask ourselves like, are we more bullish on it now than mm. when we started it? Yeah. Right. Because yeah. when you start a company, you're always, yeah. you're obviously, it takes a lot of courage to start yeah. a company and it takes a lot of, you know, risk. Yeah. And so you must be bullish on it when yeah. you do that. Yeah. And you have to have confidence and, you know, you understand that there are risks and that, you know, not all startups work out. And I would say yeah. after four years into it, you know, we're, we're more bullish on mm. Legion M than we've ever been. Mm-hmm. And, you know, part of that comes from just the engagement and the support that we've had yeah. from the community. It's yeah. awesome. It's really like we, this was a wild idea, you know, mm-hmm. and it yeah. is the type of idea that like early on when we would tell people about it, a lot of people would look at us and go, you want a million fans as your investors? You yeah. realize what a nightmare that'll be? And, you know, we would always yeah. say, well, yeah, it might be a nightmare, but if we engineer the company from yeah. day one to manage and cope with that nightmare yeah the other side of it the value is so valuable so that valuable. it's worth yeah. right it's nirvana yeah. you know and so you know we're still in the early days i mean yeah. even though it's been four four years we still have a long way to go to mm-hmm. our toward our objective but we're very confident on our kind of ability to get there and mm-hmm. you know and if we're successful you know, I think that that we will become one of the most influential companies mm. in Hollywood. If you have a million users, you're there. It'll be unstoppable. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned there, kind of, you structure the company to uh, embrace this community based approach. How? What are some ways in which you've done that and engaged the, the fans? It's a good question because I think you know, for us. Again, we were architected from day one to be a fan-owned company. So mm-hmm. even if you look at like our share structure and mm-hmm. our founding documents mm-hmm. and that sort of stuff, it it contemplates this. Mm-hmm. And so you know, like one of the things that we did uh, early on uh, was establish a dual class share structure, mm-hmm. uh, just because of the fact that we we think that. A community of entertainment fans is literally the best possible source to help us make decisions and be voting on content and mm-hmm. what's hot and helping us find IP. Um, but we don't necessarily think it's the best, you know, group for corporate governance. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you yeah. know, we looked at like the way that Google and uh, Facebook and Berkshire Hathaway and some of the companies that we really respected, how they had kind of uh, addressed this issue, especially mm-hmm. as an equity crowdfunding company. We expect to lose control of it very early mm-hmm. in the cycle compared right. to, you know, kind of a traditional uh, VC backed company. Right. And so um, anyway, so, you know, we did stuff like that and. Just like Paul said, it's like the financial people, like they, the heads would just like explode when we mm-hmm. talked to them about this idea when we were starting because it's the exact opposite <laughs> yeah. of what you try and do. You right. try yeah, and get exactly. a couple whale investors, yeah. right? Because they're easy to manage yeah. and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And instead, 
um, we're just constantly looking at ways that we can harness this this power of our community. Mm-hmm. And it's our members only Facebook group, and it's mm-hmm. the tools that we've created, like Impulse and Film Scout, that allow our. Can you talk a little little more about those two tools? To be yeah. a part of it, yeah. Well, Film Scout's probably one of the best examples mm-hmm. at all about what Legion M is, which is uh, we went to Sundance mm-hmm. uh, this past year. And as Paul mentioned earlier, we were going to try and purchase a film, right? Mm -hmm. It's a marketplace where uh, films are shown for the very first time. And there are distributors in the audience that uh, watch the film. It's actually cool because you're there as a fan or you can go as a fan. But in that same audience are people with big checkbooks. And the filmmaker is watching their film being seen for the very first time ever. And what their hope is, their dream is that... One or more of these um, distributors mm-hmm. will, you know, Pick like it, it compete for get it. in a bidding war. They will literally negotiate all night long. And wow. at 7 a.m. the next morning, they announce that Hulu just bought this film for $11 million, mm-hmm. outbidding Amazon and Netflix. Mm-hmm. Like, that's mm-hmm. literally what's going on at Sundance. And that so, night? That night, yeah. Like, really? But, so, but that, that's, that happens for, like, maybe 5% of, of the films. Yeah. Yes. It's mm-hmm. a very, you know, there are, there's a couple hot films and titles mm-hmm. where that, that happens. But then there are a lot of oh, other great films where they might have a deal or, you know, an offer or, you know, maybe you're still looking for an yeah. offer. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but so so for us as a, distri- or as a distributor looking for films, there's 119 films there. Mm-hmm. And most of these are brand new films that mm-hmm. have never been seen before. Mm-hmm. And um, you've got to, you know, figure out, A, what are you going to watch? You're going to be at Sundance for three or four days. Mm-hmm. You know, how, there's only so many movies that you can see. Right. Um, right. And, you know, it's a really interesting problem because mm-hmm. traditionally companies solve this with its gut feel and its intuition. And it would be Paul saying... it's probably personal relationships. I think I like this personal movie. Personal relationships. You know, me saying I like that movie. And then we mm-hmm. can argue about who's right and who's wrong. Mm-hmm. And we just felt like there's a better way. Mm-hmm. And we have this amazing resource, which yeah. is... Uh, over a hundred thousand people in our community yeah. that are passionate fans of entertainment. So we built this platform called Film Scout, which was set up as a game where you could mm-hmm. come in and you could see the you know the description of the movie. There's an image from the movie. You mm-hmm. know the cast and crew, all the information that's available. Mm-hmm. Most of these films don't even have trailers. Like they're so new, you don't even have that. But some of them might have an article in Variety or something that right. you can read. And so we aggregated all the data and we put it in the system that allowed mm-hmm. all of our members to come in and rate and evaluate the film and every investor gets a vote or is the vote proportional based on their dollars it's a game so you every investor gets invited to play in the game and And every member as well like it's not just for investors got it you know because for us the more data we've got the better so you have now 23, 24,000 investors but you have a lot more members as well yes we have over 100,000 members ah, very cool yeah you can join legion m for free who yeah. hopefully will become investors think, well yeah in the next if round. they can yeah. afford it or yeah. if it's you know mm-hmm. in their well we didn't want to do we don't want to limit our community to people that can afford investing. right right uh, we also wanted to make it the 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 experience to be you don't need to like invest to find out what legion m is all about you right. can join for free and get yeah. to know us and see what we're doing yeah. and you know, we feel like that's a better way. We have more higher quality investors because they yeah, maybe joined and then invested after they had kind of yeah. been to some events and yeah. got to know us. And, yeah. and we just felt like that was a more kind of smooth smooth process. Especially in the early days because mm-hmm. equity crowdfunding was so new right, that people yeah. didn't know what it was. Yeah. You know, half the there people thought immediately it's a scam. Skepticism, you know? but if yeah. you and can kind of bring them into the community. Rightfully so, right? right. Like hopefully yeah. people are watching the Fire, Fun- Fire Festival, Fire Festival yeah. documentary, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff like that mm-hmm. and we felt like the best way is to just say, come on in, yeah. be a part of the community. For us, frankly, the larger we are, the more powerful we are. So mm-hmm. if you join as a free member and you participate, you like in a way, if you think about it, us. you're helping me as a shareholder yeah. by increasing the value of my company. Yeah. And you know, you're not participating in that yeah. because you're not a shareholder. But again, for a lot of people, that's fine. Like they're yeah, in yeah. it because of the fact that they just want to be a part of it. Yeah. So then the film scale uh, game. So then you collect all this kind of data from your fans, members, investors, um, their votes. And then what, well, so, the outcome of that then? so yeah, so so when we added it up, mm-hmm. right, it was over one man year worth of analysis that had gone into it from wow. thousands, thousands of Amazing. people. 
So we had that as data. Which is We're, incredibly valuable. It, so you know what else no has that data. valuable than the logistical exactly. uh, administrative yeah. complexity of having 24,000 investors. Exactly. So, yeah. so we use that data to narrow the list down to like the 120 films, you know, to like, okay, well, these are the 20 that people are most interested in. Yeah. Then the, the second part of it is... Um, is we had people on the ground. People, any Legion M investor member, you're welcome to come mm. out to Sundance. Mm. We have a lounge there for the past two years, and we're yeah. having one again this year yeah. Yeah. on Main Street. Um, we have celebrities coming through. Last year was the Getty Photo Studio. The year before that, we had Leonard Maltin doing live stream interviews with yeah. Movie Pilot. And uh, anyway, you can come and you can be a film scout in Park City. Yeah. You go, you know, we're like, okay, here's your assignment. Go watch these wow. these films. And then and you fill out a scouting report. Yeah, yeah. And you write so, a re, real detailed what? review. That's, that's so yeah. if you think about it, like that's the two important metrics on a film, right? Looking at what yeah. is it about, who's yeah. in it. That's how you decide what you're going to watch this weekend. And then you watch it. But then watching it, you yeah. need people that can say like, yeah, this is actually a really good movie. Or maybe this is one that you didn't uh, expect. But it's this amazing. Is amazing. That's it's, like it's, a predictor of, you know, the, the review. And the yeah. Rotten Tomato scores, yeah. as we, we yeah. believe. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's it's basically what we funder is doing for finance and investing. Yeah. You guys are, are doing for movies, and just yeah. that explanation of how the film scout is working is it just helps me to kind of see that even more crystally yeah. clearly than I did before this interview. It's like it's exactly the same thing. It's, well, like, it's, it's democratizing like, yeah, it's, who participates, it is. Yeah. And, and that's one of a dozen examples that yeah. we found mm-hmm. with our shareholder base yeah. of ways that we can make better decisions and influence the outcome. Right? Yeah. Like if you think about it, if if you've got two entertainment yes. companies that are launching identical movies movies at the yep. same time one of them has even at our point 25,000 people that are yep. talking about it you know on social media the other coming doesn't. out opening night to yep. do yep. opening weekend meetups like you just have an inherent competitive advantage, advantage. The, the guy from um, Chattanooga I, I interviewed the guy from Chattanooga FC on the podcast a couple of months back and he was saying there's two soccer teams in Chattanooga Chattanooga FC who went on WeFunder yeah. And recruited three and a half thousand local yeah. uh, Chattanoogans yeah. as investors, yeah. and the other one that was like owned by the millionaire in town. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a friend who lives in Chattanooga, and he messaged on LinkedIn, "Hey, to the other soccer team that's owned by the millionaire, good luck winning out in this battle between the soccer teams because right. Chattanooga FC just recruited three yeah, and a half got, thousand yeah. citizens, yeah. hardcore fans, super fans. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the super fans. Yeah. Well, um, and, you know, one of the cool things, and I think it applies to Chattanooga as mm-hmm. well, is that you know, in our case, being involved in Legion M and owning shares is really fun. Mm-hmm. Like our motto yeah. is having fun can be good business. Yeah. And, you know, the whole idea of going to Sundance mm-hmm. as a film scout. Yeah. Or even playing this, you know, <clears throat> fantasy sports for entertainment nerds type game. That's yeah. the way we look at it. Yeah. That's fun. We're not asking people to dig a trench or do something that, you know, we're asking them to do something that they want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's delivering on our promise to them, which mm-hmm. was that, you know, you're going to have a voice mm-hmm. and that voice and that data mm-hmm. is adding value to the company that they co-own. Yeah. So it's like this, you know, flywheel Virtual concept cycle. where it just kind of feeds itself. And, you know, the more people in our film scout, the more valuable it becomes, yeah. the more rich the data becomes. And, you know, when we did this last year, we announced it for the first time, like in a kind of a, a bigger way at Sundance. And uh, we were successful. We bought a film. Uh, we had a great article in Forbes magazine, like literally the day Sundance opened. Mm. Um, and it was a really fun experience. Like for our community, they all get... Um, we asked them to also not just tell us what they like, but what's their prediction of what the market right. will receive. And so they that's something we can measure because ultimately we have the results yeah. and we have a leaderboard. Wow. And so then so we then, know like, like, our elite the scouts, who, are yeah. the, who has their finger on the pulse, yeah. and we can keep track of that over, over time. And Amazing. that also, they earn a spot in a special category mm-hmm. where they might get invited to a screening in L.A. or get to view a screener of a film before we make an investment there, there can be included in the sort of, you know, uh, a you call it the Pantheon, the Pantheon, the Pantheon. Yeah. go big on the Roman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. We got the Legion going. So. Uh, so that's, so that's like the, the vision, the theory of how mm-hmm. the, recruiting this army of investors can add value and help you to build a business that, that wins. 
is that coming uh, to fruition in reality? What's what's how's the business doing? Um, I I mean I think absolutely. It's yeah. it's we have a very I mean Paul and I are both Silicon Valley guys, mm-hmm. and yeah. the rest of our team is in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. and so we're literally a Silicon Valley Hollywood mashup. Yeah. So we are very much into the agile approach, yeah. um, which is actually really interesting when it comes to content development. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people don't necessarily think about this, but the way that a movie is made is actually, it's like textbook waterfall, Mm -hmm. right? There's a screenplay, Mm -hmm. that's the spec. Mm -hmm. You get all the smartest people in the the room and all the big executives to sign off and say, yes, this is our screenplay. And then you spend $150 million to produce that screenplay. Yeah. And so, you know, like some of the things that we're doing is uh, we have a great project called Girl With No Name, mm-hmm. uh, which is a film that we're trying to get produced. It's a um, it's an action adventure like Western, right? Think mm-hmm. the, the, the storyline of True Grit, mm-hmm. right? But with a female heroine that's more like a Katniss Everdeen or mm-hmm. an Eleanor Ripley, uh, yeah. Ellen Ripley, a, um, you know, badass woman yeah. protagonist that doesn't need the men to solve her problems. Yeah. Um, and shot in a very visual style, all like 300 or mm-hmm. Kingsman or maybe mm-hmm. even like a Sin City. Just something yeah. that is not a dusty old Western. It's right. like an action adventure yeah, that hard. happens mm-hmm. to be set in the old West. Mm-hmm. And um, anyway, so we're working with the producers on it and, and, the, director. and the director. And yeah. we thought, let's make a comic book first, mm-hmm. right? If you mm-hmm. think about mm-hmm. it, like from an agile development yeah. standpoint, yeah. a comic book is kind of an MVP. It helps yeah. you demonstrate Super low that, cost. That, that people like it. It's yeah. extremely low cost. And, you know, as an added bonus, the a comic book is kind of like the first draft of the storyboards. Yeah. So what we did is... Which we're going to do anyway. Is mm-hmm. we, we created, we took a section of the script, mm-hmm. created a comic book from that, brought mm-hmm. in some amazing artists, and um, launched it on Kickstarter mm-hmm. to do pre-sales, mm-hmm. right? The comic book was already done. So mm-hmm. we weren't like, hey, we need your money to finish this. It's Kickstarter is just a really cool platform, yeah. you know, to do pre-sales. And we had all these great packages uh, put together. And we launched it on Kickstarter and, you know, we set our, our goal, our mm-hmm. target for $6,000 because that's the average amount that a comic book project on Kickstarter makes. Yeah. We had never done one before. I'm intrigued by how and much you raised. This was not an established IP or anything. This was a brand new IP with yeah. a writer. Yeah. It came from a screenplay. It's not like a known comic writer. Um, anyway, we had $135,000 worth of pre-sales. Wow. Which... In the Kickstarter world, was amazing, and and it, again, if you look at what I want you to do, by the way, yeah, is map the. Uh, you get email addresses from Kickstarter of the backers. Yes, we do. Yeah. Map those to the we to the investors. investors. Well, so yeah. here's here's what's interesting, interesting. is that. Coming out of the gate, mm. the Legion M, you know, people rally behind it, and that gives us a great burst. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what does that do? Well, now suddenly we're one of the what's hot projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got selected as a project that we love. You get the yeah. flywheel. Going. And so yeah, yeah. you know, it's like again, it's 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 we see the same thing when we release this you know memory uh, yeah, documentary. DVD, yeah. On um, on iTunes because of the fact that we can bring a flood of people yeah. in. The it's not just it you have twenty four thousand people that you're going to pitch and buy in the comic book, but you have twenty four thousand marketing exactly. promoters. Yeah. We our goal, our they're whole purpose yeah. is yeah. to use our community as a lever mm. that gets the exposure and gets it out. Like mm-hmm. this isn't like Mary Kay, where like the whole idea is that you're going to buy yeah. our movies and that's yeah, how right. we're going to yeah. stay in business. It's mm-hmm. it's it's how can we collectively. How can we use that legion to put our finger on the scale and improve the chances of success? And so, like, if you think about it, you know, Hollywood is an extremely competitive industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are hundreds of entertainment companies that are doing the sort of thing that we can do. But if we can add, you know, increase our chances of success by... 5%, 10%, 5%, yeah. 10%, yeah. just that difference. If we do nothing yeah. else than do exactly the same thing everybody That's else is straight doing, up profit. we should be more successful. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, I mean, the way I look at it is, you know, entertainment projects are like startups. Mm-hmm. You know, it is, yeah. most of them don't provide a very good return yeah. or you'll lose money yeah. on. And so uh, a handful big. will give you a little bit of money back, but then you'll have one or two out of 10 yeah. that are just like, provide a return across the entire portfolio. And so for us, it's really like when we look at it is, you know, the Legion, because of our lever and our ability, we know we can't make a bad movie good. 
Mm-hmm. Right? What we can do is we can reduce the downside risk in a bad movie situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but we can absolutely help make a good movie a hit. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah, where yeah. I think the real value is. Yeah. And so, like, if you look at that's an interesting Hollywood question. In general, like, this, that's another analogy with Silicon Valley, right? Is like, is it if you build it, they will come, or is it all on distribution and marketing and sales? Yeah, so, get with a the movie, there. where do you guys think it's, it is? Is it like 50 it's 50? Is it, yeah. It, yeah, it's both. I mean, I think it's finding the right IP. Um, and you know, one of the, like when you ask, like, how's the business doing? I would say one of the, one of the best case studies we have is a movie that is now like considered a, already a cult classic. It's got a huge fandom. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a great deserving movie. We invested early in that movie. It's called Mandy, Mm -hmm. uh, starring Nicolas Cage with, uh, the director is Panos Cosmatos and it's really kind of boundary pushing movie Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways and um but and and we invested in that movie we took it to sundance it was amazing experience we had the premiere party and then when it got picked up it got picked up by a distributor that did a day and date release meaning that it was going to go out in theaters and you know a decent number of theaters but not a huge wide release um but then be available as premium vod on the same day and what Legion M really did is we helped that movie find its audience. Mm-hmm. And everybody involved in the project, from the distributor to the filmmakers to the producers, they would all all agree that Legion M had a hmm. massive impact Amazing. on the grassroots community. And it was yeah. a nice case study for us because there wasn't a huge marketing budget you know that that yeah. would obfuscate our impact. Like, yeah, yeah it's okay. We lean in. It was on a small project. marketing budget. This was the only thing yeah. really helping yeah. it, aside yeah. from the fact that people liked it when they saw yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but you had to get them out to see it. You know, and um, you and did it, that. We did that, and yeah. it was like, it, it, to a certain degree, it kind of tested our community and yeah. our metal. Tested us in a vacuum. Because yeah. there weren't a lot of other other, factors. and the amazing thing is, you're just getting going, right? Like yeah. twenty five thousand yeah. is two oh, and a half percent of a million. We were a third the size we we are now yeah. when we did that yeah. film. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. well, if you look at our um, at our, like our SEC filings and that yeah. sort of stuff, you know, you'll see there's a whole section called how we plan to make money. Mm-hmm. And if you look at the projects that we've done over the past almost four years now, mm-hmm. there. There's like a dozen little prototypes of mm-hmm. things. And the thing is, like, you know, we're not making huge bets right now. Mm-hmm. You know, we tell people, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, we're like Tesla. These are the first, you know, right. Tesla didn't go in business because they thought like, oh, we're going to make a ton of money making these little electric sports cars. It's like, yeah. no, the electric sports cars were something that allowed them to understand the space and to right. build some infrastructure that then allowed them to move up to the next one. And then it's the Thank third one and the fourth production. one. Like, that's where yeah. we're going to... And so with us, we've experimented with almost every position in the value chain yeah. for a film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, mm. you know, and there are dozens of different ways to yeah. invest in movies. And uh, as, we get, as we get larger now, we, A, we've got more, more power because of the fact that the Legion is larger. Yeah. B, we've got more of a track record and a reputation. Yeah. We've been able to see, like, yeah. okay, we can really make a difference here. Yeah. And, you know, maybe here, maybe we thought we could, yeah. but, but it wasn't as, as great. Like, let's focus, focus on this. And so, you know, I, I view it as all the projects that we've done so far. I mean, we've got, I don't know, probably a dozen projects that we've mm-hmm. invested money on our slate. They're all prototypes that are yeah. really allowing us to, to understand our business, yeah. to demonstrate to the world what we're capable of, yeah. and and as now we're you know we're making larger investments, mm. we're making smarter investments, yeah. we're in different positions, and we're also able, frankly, to negotiate better deals. Well, I was going to say that's another um, comparison I see with Silicon Valley, right? Because yeah. the best startups. They want the best investors on their cap table yeah. because they know that those investors are then going to add value for them um, yeah. in whatever way that might be. If you can demonstrate, like you just said, hey, small marketing budget for this movie, but boom, did the Legion like pull through and like get get that into some some big kind of distribution? If then every producer is going to want you guys to be investing in them on good generous terms for you <laughs> because they want that marketing terms, i mean yeah, one, right? one of the things we, we've we've seen is that 
like there are projects that want us involved yeah. without us having to invest, <laughs> you know, where yeah, we yeah. can get a, a piece of equity. We've had other projects where, and we would, we're not like for, for sale or for rent. You can't just like come and say, Hey, we want the Legion to support this project. Yeah. Um, and we'll pay you. I mean, we're, we only get behind projects that we believe are worthy of the yeah. Legion getting involved and that will resonate with our community. And yeah. as Jeff mentioned, we have a lot of tools that allow us to kind of understand what their interest is. Even beyond Film Scout, we have Impulse, uh, which is like a way for us to poll our community and find out what genres and what directors and what you know IP do they see out there that they like. But you know the the real power of it is that you know when we're when we're delivering for our community that mm-hmm. when they're backing it you know that 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 has a value yeah. and it has an inherent value and yeah. when whenever possible we want to use that inherent value to increase the probability of success for our investment mm-hmm. but in other cases where especially now where we're not you know like we're not in a position where we would fully finance something, Mm -hmm. you know, if other people want to kind of want us involved and are willing to be generous with the terms and it's a project that we believe, you know, our community would get behind, then that makes total sense for us. It's, it's exactly analogous to Silicon Valley in that there are an infinite number of projects that are looking for investors to make them happen Mm -hmm. and a very small number of projects that the investors are literally fighting. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And, and, and it's, it's, you know, our, we believe, and we've seen this already that the bigger we get, the more value we can bring. And it's like you said, like, who do you want to invest the millionaire, right? Or the company that's going to bring 25,000 fans. Well, that's, that's our vision for WeFunder as well. We are years away from this right now. If you can get a half a million dollar check from Sequoia and a half a million dollar, a crowd raise from from WeFunder, you're going to go with the the blue chip VC, right? The vision where, where some we, people would. I don't know that we. You would. guys, you yeah. guys did the WeFunder. We've done that route, route before. and and this is yeah. the vision, right? Which is that like more and more companies will see. Oh wow! Like yeah. if I can raise that half a million from an army of ambassadors, and if if we can kind of build products and um, you know put in place systems and structures to really maximize the value that that crowd is going to bring to that startup yeah. over time. More and more companies are just going to say, "Why on earth would I not do this?" Yeah. Yeah. It's like every company should should be kind of raising money yeah. in the early days this way, recruiting this. That's what we believe. Like we're fans. huge, huge believers in, yeah. in equity. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for being. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for being like early adopters. You know, literally the first day <laughs> I went live, when well, everyone's like, can see, "What we, is this?" We thing? literally designed our entire business model yeah. around oh, yeah. it. But and we, and we believe that there are certain industries that lend itself. Yeah. And like like I think the Chattanooga Football Club is yeah. a great example. I think example. breweries and distilleries breweries. are doing well. Movies, honestly, Jim Cummings uh, from the Beta Test. I don't know if you saw this. He raised four hundred grand on on WeFunder. He we had him on the podcast the other day. His round was oversubscribed. He said he had to chuck out his um, co-producer's dad from the race because oh, really? was subscribed. Wow. But uh, we see um, we see other movies. I think you know um, trying to look at um, raising money in this way as well. Yeah. Well, it, it makes a lot of sense. I think for entertainment, just because yep. if you think about it, there's infinite content out there right, right now, and there's so many. You know, but but a lot of times what separates a successful piece of content from unsuccessful is just the ability to rise above the noise. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I mean, Kevin Smith will tell you the hard part about making a movie these days isn't making the movie; it's marketing and distributing yeah. the movie. Yeah. And you know, if you think about it, like we live in kind of a golden age of content development yeah. because the tools yes. to produce have never been more accessible. Yeah. Um, Which then makes it harder to cut through the noise. It does, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. exactly it. So um, I want to switch gears a little. Talk about the um, the raises that you guys have done. Mm-hmm. I imagine the answer to this question has changed a lot over the yeah. last three and a half years since May sixteenth, twenty sixteen, when you launched the first <laughs> campaign. But how have you gone about marketing the campaign? You're the most successful company ever to raise a we funder by mm-hmm. dollars raised and number of investors. So do we get a trophy? Is there a trophy? Yes, you do. Waiting for you downstairs. Where's that trophy? We'll pick it up. I'm sure it's big, so we might need a bigger yeah. car yeah. when we yeah. pick it up. We'll yeah. rent a yeah. truck. Yeah, and yeah. get it. Yeah. Um, got lost in the mail. Sorry, <laughs> but 
Uh, yeah, how did you market the campaign? Like, maybe going back to that first campaign. Yeah. Were you running Facebook ads? Are you <laughs> trying to focus on a PR it's strategy? A, it's a great question. I would say PR was initially very important for us in the early days. Did you get kind of extra PR attention, do you think, because it was his first wave yeah, and that was a real kind of interest from the press? We thought we would because we were one of the first reg CFs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I wouldn't say that we... We got a lot for that. We got a decent amount for being the first fan-owned entertainment company. Yeah. Got it. And I think that's a, that's a just a flag that people are more interested in. Like what, what we've noticed is that equity crowdfunding is still like kind of um, in a lot of cases, it's way better now than it was four mm-hmm. years ago. But um, it's getting like it used to be just lumped in, oh, it's crowdfunding. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just right. another form of crowdfunding. Yeah. and. Now I think people starting to realize that actually it's a profound difference from crowdfunding. Well, average it is Kickstarter like, raises twenty five k. Average WeFunder raises three fifty k. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's a big difference. Mm-hmm. But um, to answer your question, so it's kind of funny when we started off. Uh, we we obviously had this amazing idea. It's like a fan owned company. Like people are going to come in droves, and um, we uh, we have been planning to launch a Reg A. And, you know, they announced that the Reg CF was going to become available. We're like, you know, let's give it a go. Let's Stop give it that. a go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's MVP, start there. Use MVP, it as an MVP. Yeah. That was literally yeah. kind of what we thought. And um, we had at the time millions of dollars of reservations. People that had said, I want to invest. And we had a little really? form. Yeah. Wow. Um, Just and through... PR and Facebook ads and... No, no, no. There weren't even any Facebook ads. It was literally just PR. And this is before we launched our Reg CF. I don't think we had done any Facebook But I think we had done some Facebook promoting to just get them to... Anyway, the point is, so we thought, oh, we're going to launch this Reg CF. It's going to sell out in a day, you know, and we're going to be on to our our, our Reg A. And at the end of day one... Uh, what we found out the, t- well, the, the end of week, week one through your campaign. <laughs> the end of week one, our you know two million dollars in reservations had translated to about two hundred thousand dollars worth of actual investment. Oh well, I mean that's so, that's better than I thought you were going to say. Well, yeah. it was fine, ten you know, percent okay. and twenty percent of the goal. But you know, yeah. we were kind of at that stage of the crowdfunding campaign that I'm sure yeah. so many people are using the plateau. The where plateau it's like, okay, doing. you know, hey, we got fifteen hundred dollars in today. Oh, we got seventeen hundred. Yeah hundred dollars in today and so we're like okay well let's let's try some facebook ads yeah, and yeah. and see what we can do and launch this set of facebook ads to to the two million dollars worth of, kind of uh remarketing to them yeah. as well as new exposure you know yeah, prospecting to, to new customers and you know we do all this ourselves yeah. and uh you know we'd spend a hundred dollars on facebook ads mm-hmm. and get you know I don't know, eighty dollars worth of investment. Ouch. Like, oh, Ouch. that does not yeah. scale. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be tough. And you know, but that would you know, we're like, okay, well, let's try this and let's try that. Yeah. And as in iterating on the Facebook ads. Iterating different on ads. the ads. Well different ads the and ads different ads audiences. Yeah. And the flows. Because yeah. that's another that's, thing that's, that's really important. That's what I want yeah. one of the things I want to talk about, because you guys have your own landing page, you've built this incredible is that what you're talking about when you say flows well, directing it, to your page rather than we find and it? yes, mm-hmm. yeah. And specifically also allowing people to sign up as a free investor. Because exactly. at the time to we, the, as a we didn't have that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, yeah. As, yeah. A, as a Which free investor. Which then member. is uh, obviously it's it's not just for the purpose of this, right? You want those people as members even if they right. can't afford to invest. Yeah. But it does also serve the function of a basically a drip campaign. Well, well, but but it's like again, back in those days, you know, we're like, yeah, invest in Legion M. They're like, you can't invest in a company. That's illegal. All yeah. you can give is rewards, you know, yeah. or this is Kickstarter or this is a fraud, you but know, if like you it that was email, so new. You can kind of bring them along. That we thought, yeah, yeah let's just let people mm-hmm. be a part of it. Let's let them see what we're all about and yeah. let's just yeah, like you said, it's it's kind of like a drip campaign. We're just we're constantly giving them information about what we're doing. Well, and one thing that I would add is that we did, you know, we did have two hundred thousand dollars of investment, and they were coming in, and um, the investors from like what we could gauge, and we created this private uh, Facebook group for them to interact. The sentiment and enthusiasm there was really strong, yeah. right? And so we felt like, wow, this is really powerful. And if I'm a new investor, yeah. that's something I want to experience before I invest. And so allowing people to join for yeah. free, inviting them to that members group, they'd see how excited people are for investing. 
And it was like, oh, okay, this A doesn't mm-hmm. look like a scam because there are other people doing it. Yeah. And B, I'm not alone. I'm going to be in this community and I can already see that this community is cool and having fun and, you know, I doing... imagine that's probably <coughs> difficult for other startups on WeFunder to, to replicate. Yeah. I think probably like your model and what you're building, what you're doing is, is more conducive because to Because it's in the entertainment space? Partly. Possibly. Just because I because don't know. so much of the vision of the company is wrapped up in building this this community. Yeah, maybe. I think it. I think it. It, it applies to any business that has like you know passion at its core. Yeah, and so I I do think that yeah, there are people that are passionate point. about beer and about spirits yeah. and about football clubs and yeah. you know about these things. I mean, if it's an enterprise sales software tool yeah. that. You know, there might be some people that really nerd out on that, but I think it'd be harder to get a yeah. you know fun. It's also them. something that you can cultivate if you make a commitment to it. Yeah. So we've fundamentally said because we so are going to have yeah. a members only Facebook group. Yeah. Like that's not free. Like yeah. we have to that go takes, in there. We have to talk to yeah. people. Yeah. And I'm, not that it's a bad. Like that's actually one of the most fun things about yeah. the job. Yeah. But you've got to make the time commitment yeah. to deal with that and to to feed. You know, yeah. to give the care and feeding to that community. Do you have someone on your team that now we do? Yes, yeah, we dedicated. Do. Well, really but it's still it's still us. Yeah. Like yeah. we yeah. go We're in that there, probably sure. just about every day, and I don't yeah. post every day, but yeah. I'm, I'm in We're there. there as know, much as by checking out what's going on and being part of the conversation and all that sort of stuff. I would say, you know, it's critical for us, like, to just, you know, to see it and to know. It's also, I would say, like, really motivating. Yeah. You know, to see, kind like, of fun. How, how it's, you know, where where all the energy is. We have a Slack channel of uh, investments. Um, I think when you guys were closing recently, it was basically all you. So oh. thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is it? It's a Slack channel where you see investments coming. All the investments yeah. come uh, in. Yeah, yeah. So it's, oh, you see all the little love letters? The and we messages. see the love letters. So yes. I was going to oh say, God. so every time someone writes, this is why I invested, yeah. you know, I've probably read, well, Maybe all of them for Legion M. Honestly. There are thousands of them. Yeah, yeah. and it's just so inspiring. It really like, is. This is what, oh my god, we yeah. love those. We're so grateful that you guys have that mm-hmm. part of it. It's very on brand for us. That yeah. that like product yeah. feature where you can write a, a love note of why I'm yeah. it. That's yeah. like so central. It's to really it. you know yes. one of the things that I, I would say. It's not only like motivating for us to like see that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really encouraging, and it's encouraging because people get it you can tell by what they're yeah, writing yeah, yeah. that they're not like they're not writing something like well i can't wait to get my first dividend check next week and you're like oh shit you know, they thought they were getting a dividend yeah. you know they're like <laughs> i know i know this yeah. is like a you know like uh like a long shot but i'm excited to get involved and try to make it happen or i believe in this vision and i think we can change hollywood you know and it's like yes interesting that's counter what we want. counter example to that we had to take a campaign down recently because they were um, basically acting badly in mm. terms of uh, promoting yeah. the race yeah. all of the investors that invested in that one the notes were all around I want to make money. Can't wait to make right. money. Can't yeah. wait to make yeah, money. Yeah. And that is so rare. It's yeah. almost yeah. always yeah. that, um, you know, I love what you're doing. Like, yeah. we have an ice yeah. cream store that's fundraising right now. Yeah. So yeah. many of them are like, I love your ice cream. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. And that's, I mean, that's the way it should be. I yeah. mean, yeah. like, we obviously, we really care. Like, for yeah. our investors, like, the way we look at it and the way we describe it is, you know, first and foremost, we're really transparent. Like, don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Right. You know, statistically, most startups fail. Yeah. And you know, we're at the least we're not, it's going to be locked up. For we're not immune years, to so. that yeah. that potential. We could easily. <laughs> Your dividend check's going to going to be a while yeah, before yeah. it starts to arrive. But you know, the companies that go on to you know defy those odds can change the world and you know yeah. and be really valuable. And so, if you want to make a bet, you know, alongside of us, you know, that's. That's what we want you to do. And so I think it's, you know, we have a video that we recorded called Watch Before Investing, where we basically, I don't know if you've seen it, but we basically talk people out of investing too much money. That's amazing. And anytime someone invests over a certain amount, like around Mm $5,000, we reach out and contact them Mm -hmm. to make sure that A, they understand the risk, B, they can afford to invest that kind of money. That's amazing. It's just, you know, it feels better to us, but Mm -hmm. it's also... You know, like, I think it's better business. You know, we'd rather have you as an investor, you know, investing less money than have you as a, 
you know, yeah. an angry investor later yeah. because you invested, you know, thinking this was a surefire bet. That's amazing. Um, I love that. A um, couple more questions on the fundraising. So firstly, were you able, have you been, I imagine the answer is yes. Have you been able to tap into much virality and how have you, how, those first $200,000 of investors, how, how did you try to get them to bring in others? Have you seen much of that? Yeah, I mean, we definitely have seen it, and more and more, like, you'll see love letters, like, oh, my friend recommended this, and, nice. and uh, we haven't made, like, that's one of the areas that we as a company want to <clears throat> focus, mm-hmm. is we do spend a lot of time on that for films, and trying to create, you know, in, encourage viral sharing of right. the films and our movies that are coming yeah. out, but for investing, and our projects, not as much. but yeah, and, and part of it is, like, it's kind of tough. We don't want to put you in that position right. of being that guy that's trying to that's sell trying people to sell on an yeah. investment. Yeah. Yeah. Like right? I mean, investing is a really personal decision. But at the and same time, if you can leverage 24000 well, people I'll tell to pay you, exactly. I'll tell you where, where, where we do do it, and it's more um, kind of embedded in another objective, which mm-hmm. is when our films release, mm-hmm. we do meetups around the country. Mm-hmm. And we do them specifically to A, help you know the film itself because yeah. it gets more people to come out. But it's also, we, we're sort of eventizing the release. So right. yeah, of course, you're an investor. You want to see the movie when you know Arch Enemy comes out. We're all going to want to go mm-hmm. support it. Um, but we want to give you something that you can invite your friends and family to. Right. So you're not inviting them over to like hear your pitch on why they should invest. You're inviting them, you're to, inviting them to a movie, movie that I you're invested it. in, which is an amazing yeah. kind of cool like bragging right for our yes. community. Yeah. Their picture is going to be in the animated credit on the front of the movie. We yeah. do a, a photo mosaic is our 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 amazing. movie title, like you know the uh, animated credit at the beginning. Um, but by bringing them to that event and, you know, they get to meet other investors, we're kind of, you know, and it's more our approach to like soft sell, yeah. like let people. Under- or it sounds discover- like anti-sell. <laughs> Um, so well, do well, not invest in us. Yeah, you realize this is super more. risky, right? Are yeah. $5,000? What are you wrong with you? Are you yeah. nuts? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Like, it's actually kind of terrifying. Like, but it's, it's kind of funny because like, I mean, I've got, we have so much at stake with this company. Oh, yeah. yeah. Financially, yeah. Yeah. you know, <laughs> reputation, reputation-wise, yeah. yeah. like we're doing something we're pretty really risky. Yeah. And, um, but like that part doesn't scare me as much as like the fact that Using you just invested $500 yeah. and like, because that's, you know, something that we take very yeah. seriously. Yeah. And, and that's uh, true. Yeah. Well, um, we're probably getting getting to the bottom of the, the time here. But uh, any other, you had one other question about um, uh, the kind of the paperwork and the documentation yeah, and yeah. kind of the SEC. And, you know, one of the things that I would, you know, if, if there are other entrepreneurs that are considering this, um, it's it's a manageable workload, mm-hmm. um, but it's not nothing. You know, so I would say that it's it's something that you definitely want to prepare for. And yeah. you also want to have really good partners like mm-hmm. one of the, you know, like WeFunder is a great partner, but also we have our securities lawyer that kind of guides us. Uh, we use uh, CrowdCheck, yep. Sarah Hanks, Sarah, and, yeah. you know, one of the best decisions I think. That we yeah. Made. yeah, it's, it's awesome. just like, yeah, it's hey, fellow Brit, right? So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's very she gets it. She's, you know, she's a, she's got more experience with this and it's she's just you know she's incredible to work with and I'm glad uh, uh, I'm glad us Brits are helping you guys revive the yeah revive our securities yeah. laws like, how is that <laughs> happening like well you guys got you guys it, had right? it several start, years ago so, yeah yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. Brewdog uh, is a oh really yeah Brewdog is incredible with it there's so. a lot of fintech companies in the UK that have mm-hmm. raised a ton of yeah. money through like, like, like Cointech sort of stuff or uh, no not ICOs like Monzo is a, is a new bank um, yeah. that's uh, going think about it like a bank is a great I think know. banks and insurance yes. those make fintech is a, is a good fit I yeah. think I think yeah. we'll see more of that in the US as well yeah okay so um, prepare it's not nothing I would prepare it's not nothing the other thing and I think Jeff started to allude to this which is you know like if you want to if you want to maximize your campaign it's not just going to happen mm-hmm. you know you need to yeah. like turn the wheel yeah. and you need it to invest work. in the wheel and so like in our case you know we had raised 
what, like $400,000 for the company before we yeah. raised our reg CF so From that we would have this money in the bank to do some marketing. Worked with us yeah. Before. Right. Yeah. So because you need to like prime the pump, you mm-hmm. need to get the, you know, the word out there. You need to have, you know, some money to put towards PR and, yeah. and, 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 you know, don't get discouraged. Don't be, you know, uh, like foolish in how you spend your money. But like, as Jeff mentioned, like the first couple things we tried, weren't always, it took a while to yeah. kind of figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And even today, you know, we'll start, you know, we go through, I, mean, I don't know how many different ads we go through, but in mm-hmm. ads and flows, but we're experimenting with that all the time because yeah. it. Well, for us, like our bar just keeps getting higher, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. we've been just about doubling each year. And yeah. so next year we've got to get to 50,000 investors, which yeah. means, yeah. you know, we need another 25,000. So we fund are ready for it. <laughs> bring it on, man. <laughs> yeah, bring it on. Let's I do it. it. We, uh, yeah, we, we roughly um, doubled doubled this year as well. Oh, it gets harder and harder to double every year. It, right? does. <laughs> it does. We're in the, the bar, same boat. Yeah. We're in the same the bar gets higher. The techniques change. You know, yeah. the messaging has to change. Yeah. Like it was very different, you know, when we started off, it was a, you know, 0.8, you know, return on investment yeah. for our Facebook dollars. What is it now? But by the, well, it, it, it honestly, it changes. And yeah, it's, it's, you hard. know, by the end of that round, we were at like 10 to one. Yeah. You know? For us, I think, you know, we tend to look at, in fact, in our SEC document, we talk about like 25%, you know, is for us kind of like a reasonable amount of marketing expense. Right. Yeah. And part of it is like, it's a it's very expensive if you're looking at like a cost of fundraising compared to like a broker dealer or something yeah. like that. But it's not for us a cost of fundraising. It's marketing. It's, it's, a, building it's almost brand. like a customer acquisition cost, it is, right? It is. Well, it's value. I mean, you can make an argument that if we could just break even on investments, yeah. that it, but that allows us to grow to a million, that yeah. we would have something that has yeah. intrinsic value. Yeah. So We're not making that argument yet, but yeah. you know, I mean, at some point, honestly, yeah. As, yeah. as it gets more expensive, so obviously, also advertising, like it gets more expensive as you try and scale it. Yeah. You know, so. But one of the one of the cool things that we've learned, and one of the benefits of kind of our model, mm-hmm. is that we have projects that we want to market. Right. So if we're marketing Legion M in the context of a new film that's releasing, Mm -hmm. in a lot of instances, not always, but in a lot of cases, the money we're spending promoting that project is actually an investment in that project. So we get paid back that money from the project plus, you know, our income related to it. So it's It's like like our marketing budget can be repurposed or our investments can be repurposed as a marketing budget. We have um, companies like CBG companies, they're marketing the WeFunder campaign, but then, you know, they're also marketing to potential customers. The product, the product. of course. The product. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so that's some great advice for folks that are considering a WeFunder raise. Commit to it, you know, um, especially if you want to raise uh, multiple million dollars from yeah. 24,000 people. Yeah. It's going to take uh, it's work take and, and money. Work. Yeah. And if you're raising 100K, you know, the, 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 the investment is going to be less and there's yeah. a sliding scale. Yeah, but we always ask, as well as that question, we always ask every founder we have on the podcast, one piece of advice for someone that's just starting starting out um, as an entrepreneur. doesn't have to be in the entertainment sector, but... Mm. One piece of advice. I would say, and this isn't new advice, um, I mean, it's the whole basis of like the lean startup and agile and, mm-hmm. and is just get stuff out there, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. the single biggest problem that I see with entrepreneurs and even it's the same thing actually on the content side um, is people who hoard their ideas and they're, they, they yep. feel like they're too precious. And they've got to get the patent. They, they don't want to get, they don't want the word to get out. And yep. I think the thing, like I think successful entrepreneurs always learn at some point yep. that uh, I remember the very first time we launched a website for the New York rock exchange. And I was just deadly concerned about making sure that not too many people found out about it. <laughs> and it was so quick to learn that, that is not the fundamental yeah. problem in life, yeah. right? That is yeah. never yeah. the fundamental problem. Yeah. I mean, except in extremely rare circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. The fundamental problem is how you get anybody to pay any attention yeah. to what you're doing. Yeah. And yeah. the yeah. only way that you can do to that get is to get it out there and to get feedback. And I think, you know, the, the Reg CF for us was a wonderful MVP because yeah. if that wasn't successful, yeah. that would have told us right now we could have avoided a lot of heartache and time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 
My my advice, I agree with what uh, what Jeff recommended, but I would also say that um, if you're going to do equity crowdfunding, um, it would be short sighted to look at it as just money access to capital. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really think through not just how you will kind of give lip service to engaging mm-hmm. your community, but mm-hmm. like figure out how they can really make a difference yeah. for your business, and because. I think if, if you if you tap into that, the value you get from yeah, their money is important. You need that to like run your business and to build it. But the value you can get from an engaged community yeah. of shareholders and you're you wanna be engaging with them anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, they've just put their hard earned money into your company. Yeah. Um I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs, even because we do some like angel investing of our own, and I've seen some entrepreneurs are really good at keeping their investors, you know, updated mm-hmm. and others only update them when they need more money. Yep. And it's 100%. a huge mistake yeah. because, uh, you know, the investors, like when you need your investors most, yeah. you, you, you want to have like built a relationship with yeah. them. And I think the more, you know, entrepreneurs that, that think that way, that understand that, look, the investors, they're putting their money, but you also want their mind share. Yeah. You, you, that mind share, you know, can be helpful in a lot of different ways. Like mm-hmm. Legion M is a very unique model in that, like, yeah, it makes sense that people come out and watch our movies. But even beyond that, mm-hmm. like, you know, we, we do a lot of things that we'll test. It's like having our own built-in focus group. It mm-hmm. saves us money when we, you know, we have different, you know, posters, poster designs for a movie that we want to get feedback on or if we're... Yeah. Shit, we're doing something right now where you know we're starting production on uh, on this new film, and we could go rent a car to be the hero's car in the movie. Mm. But instead, we're just going to put it out to our. I mean, we might end up <laughs> having to do that. We're going to put it out and say, "Does anyone have yeah. a car that meets this type of spec that yeah. wants their car in the movie?" <laughs> yeah, and we'll, amazing. I'm sure we're going to get yeah maybe. Uh, a lot. Yeah. We're going to get a lot of people yeah. that want to like lend us their car. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's amazing. You like, can take my beat up Nissan. Really yeah. There you, you go. <laughs> what is it? It's got a couple of kid seats in the back. Perfect. Uh, yeah, that's, that's exactly that's, what that's, we're looking for. That's the car. No, we have yeah. to drive it off a cliff. You're, yeah, okay. Exactly. You're okay with that. As long as my kids aren't in the back. Yeah, <laughs> for that scene, yeah. Yeah. You'll get the car back, but yeah. it'll have been driven yeah. off a cliff. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. It's not in one piece. <laughs> No, that's really cool. And um, yeah, honestly, it's just been super inspiring to talk with you guys, like hear a little bit more about the vision. Like I said earlier, I feel like what you guys are doing for entertainment, democratizing access to Hollywood, bringing people into the company, and then getting value from having this legion of fans is exactly what we're trying to do for finance. So. Awesome. Uh, well, we, we want to uh, be a, the poster child for a Jobs Act company. I mean, yeah. We really believe we can create. Well, check. Well, yeah. check. <laughs> so far. Yeah. And yeah. we love WeFunder. Yeah, you, you know, guys it's, it, it was actually kind of a funny story how we ended up um, uh, launching with you guys mm. uh, because we there was a different platform that we were mm. initially talking to. And literally a week before that May 16th date, mm-hmm. we read an article checked out your website and we ended up moving over and wow. it was literally again one of the best decisions that we mm-hmm. made because I think that you guys understand crowdfunding mm-hmm. and the way that you treat it and the mm-hmm. way that you treat your the investors and all that sort of stuff we you know we, we couldn't be happy yeah I would say well, one thank of the you, things that, I'll pay you, pay you later yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that really sold us on WeFunder was just how you spoke about your overall mission, purpose, yeah. Yeah. and mission, and that, that's, that's why really I work here. Honestly, us. that's like, why I work here. Our charter page, yeah. wefunder.com slash charter. Yeah. That's yeah. like why it's, I work here. It's it's another thing. I would add that to you know my recommendation for any entrepreneur, and I actually teach a class on this at uh, for Northwestern Kellogg, just like mm. the one class a year. But it's about culture mm. and culture in your company or your mm-hmm. startup, and so much of it is built around the purpose like what is Mm -hmm. your mission like what are you trying to do in our case it's very clear like Mm -hmm. we want to you know we want to be a force of good in hollywood we want to open the gates to hollywood you know you guys want to democratize this you know otherwise kind of exclusive you know um uh investment asset and i think that's incredible yeah awesome thanks so much guys thank Thank you you for having us on your show yeah appreciate it